I'm here with Marcus Norris, the composer of My Idols Are Dead. And uh, Marcus is a Jackson native. Is that true? I am. Yeah, yeah. I am. So, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about your background. I think, uh, I think your background in music is a little bit different than maybe the traditional music student. Yeah, so uh, I'm originally from Jackson. I uh, went to Jackson High. I got my start making music uh, through making beats for, for rap and R&B. And uh, me and some of my other friends from Jackson High, we would make rap songs. When I first started making beats, I didn't even show anybody for a long time. It was just for me to process what I was going through as a teenager. Yeah, but that, that, that was my um, introduction to making music. I originally was going to, um, I, I went to a two-year community college outside Detroit. And while I was there, they made me take a, a class called Basic Materials and Music Theory. And it's just like really, really basic stuff. Like this is a half note. This is a quarter note, <laughs> this type of stuff. Or, you know what I mean? Or like, these are the scales. Right, right. Um, so I thought it was interesting. So I took some independent studies on music theory and just got super into it. And and I was like, I love this stuff. And it, it's uh it's just a different way of thinking about music. I don't know. And I just, I guess I just got bit by the bug and just kind of am obsessed with kind of like putting it all together now. Let's talk about the piece a little bit. You know, you, you and I have, have talked about it a little bit. It's, it's written for string orchestra. It's called My Idols Are Dead. Yeah. So I, at this time I was, you know, going through stuff in the world. I think this was like, this was like 2018, like towards the end of 2018. And I'm thinking about like, having a lot of like pressure on your shoulders and it's like a lot of like again a lot of people from Jackson and, and, and young black men as we go into stuff it's like you there's no room for error and if I make like one mistake you kind of just don't have a career anymore you know what I mean you have to go back um there's just all this pressure and and you wish you could at least like ask somebody for some advice and it, it's a very like introspective type of thing. And there's also this like the viola comes in on a note and then it, it comes back little parts, but then at the end, it ends the same way. It's supposed to be like this, this very uh, alone feeling, which you like, are isolated maybe is a better word. Okay. Yeah.
And so we were able to send out the recording ahead of the JSO performance to some students that are in the band program and orchestra program at J High. We picked a few of the questions, there were a lot of them, but uh, here's the first one um, from Grace. Uh, she asks, what made you think of putting violin or string instruments as the main component as opposed to other instruments? Uh, that's a good question, Grace. Um, so for this piece specifically, there was the, the orchestra of the recording that um, you first heard is they were gonna be doing a residency in LA. Mm -hmm. And um, and I thought like, oh, I wanna, I wanna, I knew I wanted to write something and submit it to that residency. Okay. So there's kind of like a practical side of it. But that being said, I don't, I don't write something for every residency, especially now, like I might not like, I don't like to write big pieces if there's just kind of like, I have to hope this gets performed, you know what right. I mean? Cause it takes right. a lot of time. That's the practical side. And the other side is like, I, I just really love strings. And I kind of made a decision, like if a violinist learns about me and they like my music, it resonates with them and, and we resonate with each other. We have similar tastes. Then I want to have like five to 10 pieces for them automatically to choose from or to tell their violinist friends about, sure. you know what I mean? Um, what made you want to make it more dramatic with these gentle undertones? Why not either completely dramatic or completely gentle? Like why, why a mix? Uh, and then also um, because it starts uh, gentle and then goes dramatic to me, does it signify death? There's a uh, lot those, to unpack there. Yeah, <laughs> no, those are great questions. And, and I'm actually, uh, I'm, I'm really kind of passionate about the first part. Like you talked about, um, why not all the way gentle or why not all the way complex? Right. This is an artistic choice. This is there's not a, like a right or wrong way. A lot of people do that um, and are very successful. Uh, for me, I like to, I love the in-between things because I think that's more complicated and more, and, and, and more nuanced. As adults, we aren't just one emotion. Mm -hmm. The example I give is like, when I moved, my mom has a very complex range of emotions. She is, happy that her son has these opportunities she's excited about the future she's sad because her baby isn't yeah close to her she's uh you know, you know what i mean like she's worried she's that, you know he's she's, out on his own yeah <laughs> she's worried she's nostalgic about when i was a baby um there's like this really complex range of emotions it's not it's never just one thing and i and in my experience that's how i feel and and the art that resonates me with me the most is never just one thing. Um, so, so when I when I try to write, I try I try to put that in the music because I feel like that's a, a truer reflection of the human experience. Right. Uh, I don't have a name, but uh, the the question is, I'd like to know if he played any of the Final Fantasy games because the loud part at the <laughs> end, uh, up and down, sounded like it was from one of those games. I did play um, like the old ones. I'm like. I don't know much about. Yeah, I'm, I'm out of my element. I never played Final Fantasy. I have no idea. Yeah, we talked about uh, Southside Symphony and some of our stuff. If if you check us out on on Spotify, there's a cover of the theme of love from Final Fantasy IV, which was just really like that. That music was just really uh, influential to me. Um, what, what, so what's the, the long instrumentation? After, what's the instrumentation for the Southside Symphony? It just changes. Uh, so we did before we got to do one concert before okay. before COVID shut us down. But we had about I want to say like twelve strings and then uh, acoustic jazz rhythm section, vocalist, a gospel choir. It was fun. But like the core, it's mostly strings, right. but it, it it rotates. This is from Nick, and he says, "How do you make someone feel like this just by music? That song made me <laughs> see things from good to bad, and I loved it." I thought that's like such a great question. Like, Nick, that means the world to me. Yeah. Um, I, and I think I think that the way to do that is is if if, if say I'm gonna take it as if you're asking because you want to write music that makes people feel things. And I would say the way to do that is to be true to yourself. Like you need you just write things that are um, very authentic and come from a real place within inside you. I was worried that like the people who I knew from the concert world wouldn't like yeah. this stuff. And the people from this world wouldn't like this stuff. And then one of my mentors, he just told me like, what's from the heart reaches the heart. 
And it was just that go. simple. And, and I, I, ever since then, I just, I just try to make stuff from the heart. And I'm glad it, it reached you. That means a lot. Let's wrap up with a couple of questions. Uh, first one is, what are you working on right now? Like, what's on the menu next? As of last week, I passed another type of defense thing. Okay. So I am officially like a PhD candidate, ABD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so my dissertation composition is going to be um, an opera, like a one act, 35 to 45 minute opera. Okay. I'm super excited about. So that, that's, that's like a long-term thing. Like it won't be done till next year, but yeah. uh, I, I did a workshop, I think the end of 2019 for like, I got one scene of four written. Um, and I'm really excited about it. It's, it's going to cool. be, it's a dark comedy. It's going to be really funny. So yeah, that, that's one thing I'm working on. Uh, I'm about to do, I think this is the first time I'm telling people this. Oh. So you get it first for, All right. All right. For, for, the, for the home team, for the home team. But uh, with Southside Symphony, we're about to do an album. Oh, cool. Um, and I, I don't know what to tell you what to expect, but it's, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay. Um, like we said, it's going to come from the heart. You know that. Uh, all right. And then last question, what advice would you give, you know, like some of the, like, especially high school kids that might want to go on to a career in music, uh, whether that's, you know, teaching, composing, being an instrumentalist, whatever it is, what, what advice would you give them? Um, so I, I love this and I could do this all day. I want to say like, if anybody, uh, from Jackson high has any questions for me, you can reach out to me personally. Um, I'm, you know, and I'll email you back, right. but my big advice would be to just make a lot of stuff like, and make like, however much music you make, make like three times that. And then once you do that, make three times that <laughs> because the process is success. Mm -hmm. And um, I would say also work with all of your people around you. A lot of times we want to like, uh, how do I get these people up here to play my stuff? How do I get this huge ensemble to do my thing? And that's, I'm not saying you shouldn't try for those, but um, you're going to get a lot more in, in a lot of different ways from like working with all of your people this way and building your yeah. community. I think there's another piece of advice is like, sometimes it's just, it's just not the right time for things. and I know when I was in high school, and I'm sure it's probably the same for, for those watching this, it's like, you don't really have a good sense of time yet because you haven't been a lot around that long. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. People are attracted to momentum, I think, too, I would say. Like, um, like so some of those first opportunities would be hard. Uh, but if you just keep doing things, and that's why I say, like, it all just comes back to just make three times as much music as you're making now. Do the um, thing. <laughs> because it just, it snowballs. Yeah.